Welcome to today's 3D print. I'm going to show you how to do two things with your Ender 5 Plus that you're going to want to know how to do. First, to get that plastic off the front screen without leaving anything behind. And second, are you having problems with the ABL? I have the fix for you. Uh, the latest firmware might fix this already, but if you're having the problem I had where you try to baby step and it just makes it worse and drives the um, nozzle into the bed, here's your fix. First, if it just homes and drives the nozzle into your bed on your first print, um, you might have an older firmware where they left a default negative 19.6 millimeter offset into the firmware. Thank you to One Bad Marine for this fix. You got to plug your computer into your printer and you have to type this command in the machine control panel. All capital letters M851 space Z0. That resets the offset to zero. Then you have to type M500 to save that to the EEPROM. Then you type M503 and then hit disconnect after it scrolls a bunch of stuff on the screen because otherwise it's just going to keep scrolling. And look through the list for the M851 and make sure the Z part, don't worry about X and Y, but make sure the Z part is now set to zero. Once you do that, I will show you how to do it on the screen on your printer. So stay tuned. First, to get this plastic off, you notice the plastic is bigger than the screen, and it's underneath. So you take your fingernail and you start chipping away at it until you have a piece. Once you grab a piece, you don't want to lift up and out, because what's going to happen is it's going to pinch along the edge, and it's going to tear, and you're going to leave a piece behind, and sometimes it can mess with the screen. What you want to do is you want to pull sideways like this. And once you have it coming out, you just keep pulling sideways like this. You just keep pulling sideways. Don't lift up, pull sideways until you get all the plastic out. That's how you take care of that. Then we need to take care of the actual bed level process. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna come into settings, you're gonna come into leveling. It's going to go through a process on the screen. You're going to just wait for that process to completely finish. It's going to do its double tap. So first it's gonna come in like that. Then it's gonna come in a little slower. and then it's going to stop at some point, okay? We're going to ignore that for now. So you will hit your measuring, okay? I prefer to balance the bed first. So what I do is I lower both of these so that the glass here is sitting just even with this bracket here. And then I do the same thing over here. So I'm going to adjust this coupler until that is exactly even with that bracket and then while holding that coupler so it doesn't move adjust this coupler until the glass here is even with the bottom of this bracket the way you do that is if okay so for example see this here how you can see the bottom edge if you change your angle until that bottom edge goes bloop, disappears like that now you know your eyeball is exactly level with that plane you're going to do the same thing with the glass see I can see the top of the bed there and now it's gone. So that's when you know your eyeballs level to here. Or if you really want to do it carefully, lower your bed down to about here and use a ruler, measure from here, measure from here, make the bed perfectly level, okay? Um, next step, you're gonna hit measuring. It's gonna go through and do your 25 point bed leveling. I prefer to move the head around and use these wheels to get the bed approximately level first. This way you reduce how big of a mesh it has to create and you have less Z movement. When it, It'll work if you don't do it, but the less Z movement you have to use to compensate for the mesh, the better. Because uh, your part's not moving around as it's printing on X and Y. So let it finish all that. When it's done, don't touch the baby steps yet. Go back, go to move. You're gonna hit home, and you're gonna wait for it to do its home process. It's gonna home the X and Y, then it's gonna come out and do the double tap again, just like it normally does. And then it's gonna to move to Z plus 10. Okay, see, Z axis 10. So what you're going to do is you're going to change this. Oops, I don't want to do that. It's hard to do this through a camera because there's a lag. So one millimeter, and we're going to raise it up until we get to zero. Now when you get to about four, stop. 
watch it and make sure the nozzle doesn't actually crash into the bed. If it looks like it's going to crash into the bed, stop. Now, I already did mine, so it's going to be about right. Okay? Now, contrary to what people think, you want the nozzle touching the bed. Not just off the bed, you want it to basically be touching. So, it was slightly too close. I'll get to why in a moment. All right? When you get it to zero, you see where it's at, right? All right? You go back. You go back to leveling. Don't touch anything in here except the up and down arrow. Okay? You're going to go to minus to raise the bed up. All right? It's, it's backwards. It's not intuitive. You're, you're actually adjusting the distance between the nozzle and the bed. So, negative is closer to the nozzle. Positive is further from the nozzle. You come up here, and it's a 0.1 increment, and you adjust it until it looks about right. You want it to be just about touching the bed. Okay? Then you hit back. Don't touch anything else. You hit back. You go back to move. And you hit home again. Wait for it to finish its home. Switch to one millimeter. And adjust this again until this says Z-axis zero. And then visually inspect and verify. Is that the distance you want? You don't want it to be paper thickness. You want it to basically be zero. But you don't want it to be actually pushing into the bed. So you should be able to go to... Um, why is this working? There it goes. It's automatically going to 10. Oh, I'm in 10 increments. So you go to 1. Okay. Check your gap. See how I got a gap there? Then you get rid of the gap. And it should be about perfect. Alright. When you can repeatedly exit, go back to move, and hit home. And then this will say Z plus 10. You change it to 1 millimeters. And you bring it back down to 0. Your nozzle should be in almost exactly the right spot. That's when you're good to go. You're saying, wait a minute, don't you need a 0.2 millimeter gap? No. Because of the way this works, you do that in your slicer. So, why isn't this working? Because I don't have the mouse plugged in. I was getting a new tablet going. So, in your slicer settings here, first layer height, I have mine set to 100%, which means it's going to be primary layer height above zero okay so because I have this set to touch the bed and I have this set to 0.2 millimeters and this set to 100% it's going to lift the nozzle 0.2 millimeters above zero the slicer will take care of that from now on if you want a little more squish you can adjust it in here if you want or you can adjust it here if you want okay I would suggest leaving this at one specific setting and adjusting it here and then when you adjust your different layer heights, this will take care of it automatically. That's all you got to do. Now, here's the very important part. When you go to print something, let's do, let's do, I don't know, anything. When you go to print something in your adjust screen, do not touch this. If you touch this and you, if you're having a problem where you try to baby step and it works fine, and then you make a second print and it rams into your bed and creates your little crop circles in your bed, that's because the data here is conflicting with the data here. With the data here, it's in conflict. They're not working together properly. This Z offset and the Z offset in the print screen isn't working correctly. So only adjust your Z offset here, nowhere else. Don't touch the baby step while you're printing. If it's off when you go to print, just stop the print, come into this leveling screen, and just tap down a couple times. You know, one or two times, however far you need to go, 0.1 millimeter per, then go and do your print again. And you'll get it just right, and it will remember that setting, and it will hold that setting. So, once again, you're going to go to leveling. You're going to first mechanically level your bed as best you can. You want these springs to be pretty compressed. The more compressed they are, the more stable this will be, okay? Make sure your gantries are level left to right. Make sure your bed is pretty close to level all the way around, because the closer you get it mechanically, the less mesh you have to create. Look how tiny my mesh differences are. We're talking three decimal place mesh differences here, okay? The, the smaller your difference in your mesh, the better, okay? Hit your 25 point measuring. Exit the screen, go to move, hit home, one millimeter, 
get it to zero, making sure it doesn't crash, okay? If it looks like it's gonna crash, go back to the leveling screen, adjust your Z, plus to get it further away, minus to bring it closer. So think, always think minus, closer, plus further. And don't touch Z home, don't touch aux, make sure auto is on, all right? Move, auto home, Z10, change it to Z0, one millimeter, up down to Z0. If it's not right, go back into leveling. It'll stay at Z0 as long as you don't touch anything else. Adjust this to the nozzle is just about touching the bed. You basically want it to pretty much be touching the bed, okay? Then you come back out, you go back to move, auto home again, Z0, the nozzle should go back to where you set it. If you wanna make sure, turn the printer off, turn the printer back on. Go back to the move screen, auto home, Z0, make sure the nozzle went back to where you told it to go. When you get to that stage, you're good. Do not touch the baby stepping in the actual print adjust screen if you have the same firmware that I have and have that problem where it's driving the nozzle into the bed, okay? So once again, One Bad Marine's directions, M851 space Z0, all capitals on your terminal screen on the computer. Now, in fact, let me show you how, oh, I can't do that because I'll reset it, but I can show you some of the steps. So in Simplify 3D, you just go Tools, Machine Control Panel. Gotta wait for it to it's boot it up, it's connected. Okay, so you do your M851 space Z0, you do your M500 to save it, then you do your M503 to read out the data. Oh, I forgot it has to be capital, all capital letters, M503. There you go, write out a whole bunch of data, but see how it keeps querying M105? So you hit disconnect, and you scroll up, and you'll see it right here. So see, M851Y, M851X, M851Z, minus, this is my current offset, 3.67, negative. Yours, after you do your M851Z0 and your M500, should say zero, okay? Um, once you've confirmed that, then go and follow the directions I gave you on the screen here, and you will be fine. That's it. That's all there is to that. You do that, and I get a consistent home every single time, and I don't have to putz with it or screw with it. Uh, obviously, if you offset your gantries, if they become unbalanced for whatever reason, you bump it, you hit it, you jam a stepper motor, I don't know, whatever. If you whack it trying to get a print off, you'll have to obviously rebalance your... Um, stepper motors left and right and do your measuring again and you'll have to do your offset again now if you remember your offset you can just program it like if you remember okay when I did this last time my offset was negative 3.67 you can just type M851 space Z negative 3.67 and boom you'll have your offset back again um, but beyond that that's it you should be good to go I've had no problem since I did that the printer is working flawlessly that flaw apparently was in the tiny machines firmware Apparently that is not a problem with the Creality firmware, but the problem with the Tiny Machines firmware. Um, One Bad Marine is going to work with the coder to fix that bug. For some reason, there's a there's a, a conflict between the baby stepping on the leveling screen and the baby stepping on the print adjust screen where it, for some reason, adds five millimeters to it. <laughs> and so as soon as you adjust it on the baby step screen, it works fine until your next print where it adds the five millimeters and it rams that nozzle right into your print bed. Yeah, I actually wore down a nozzle. I, I ran that bugger in there so much, I actually wore down the nozzle. <laughs> it still works. <laughs> I can't believe it still works, but it does. But that's it. You guys have a wonderful day. I am having a blast playing with the Ender 5 Plus. I think it's going to be quite an excellent machine. And I can't wait to put a 1.2 millimeter nozzle on this bad boy. Yeah.